So I haven't really said anything for a little while. I've not really been publishing new videos. And I know I still see new subscribers every day. I don't know the full situation with YouTube, if they're kind of suppressing that some or, or what. There's a lot of talk about that kind of thing going on. But I don't know. Uh, I've always thought of myself as a pretty small fish in a pretty big pond. I don't really expect to get thousands and thousands of views. The kind of stuff I really talk about is only really of interest to a fairly small minority. I think it's an elite minority. Um, but yeah, since some people do subscribe, they're interested in hearing my thoughts, hearing what I have to say, I want to show my appreciation by at least saying something every once in a while. I just, I don't like to put stuff out constantly because then I worry that it might be of low quality and I really prefer to only talk if I actually have something of worth to say. There's an old Pythagorean saying that if you can't say something better than silence, remain silent. So if I remain silent sometimes, it's just because I'm waiting until I uh, have something worthwhile to say that's better than silence. I try to follow that maxim, and I think it's a good maxim to live by. So much suffering is caused by saying too much, other times not saying enough. It's a very difficult thing to truly master the tongue. And the tongue is a very powerful weapon. It's also a healing instrument. Don't read anything dirty into that. But you're constantly putting out either a positive energy or a negative energy with your words. Not to sound all new agey or anything. I think it's funny when people kind of get too into weird talk like that. You know, I'm not going to get real woo woo. But we are constantly putting stuff out there. And so is everyone else. And there are people who are putting very positive stuff out there. I try to be one of them. And if we all try to be one of them, the more of us decide to try to be one of them, the more of them um, there are in the world and the more positive energy kind of radiates. And you could look at that as a kind of karma, I suppose. I think the concept of karma is useful as long as you don't try to look at it too much in economic kinds of calculations where you're constantly worried about debt and surplus and all that kind of stuff. There are some people who uh, fall into that legalistic uh, kind of trap. But without getting too... Um, religious about it. We are all constantly interacting with the world, putting words and, and actions, deeds out there. And if we put out positive stuff, we are putting positive stuff into the environment that we live in. And if we put a bunch of negative stuff out there, we are polluting the environment that we have to live in. And it comes back to us. Pardon my crude language here, but it's like if someone takes a shit in a hot tub, they are in a hot tub with some shit. Okay, and a lot of people are uh, shitting on each other, just shitting on the world all the time. <laughs> Literally, believe it or not, um, some parts of the world are a little bit different than others, but we're all in a process of growth. And all of us, if we're honest, are shitting in the hot tub. Some more than others, right? But it's still, we're putting some pretty negative stuff out there. I've held back a lot of thoughts and opinions on political stuff lately. Just because there is so much polarization and tension and division and hostility and cold silence out there. Uh, centering around um, competing political ideas. 
competing views about how society should operate, uh, how we should live in this world with one another. There's different ideas about personal boundaries and what's appropriate in different situations and what isn't. And there are some people that are probably hypersensitive, to say the least. As we mature, we all have to learn to deal with that inevitable stuff out there without getting completely worked up and triggered over it. Um, I think we should try to be friendly with each other, and I think we should try not to offend each other as much as possible. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, being afraid to speak the truth when you need to, making a valid criticism. Uh, all of that, I think, is part of the process of communication that allows a society to function. Without that, um, I don't believe that a society can function. Can function. So some of that friction is inevitable and probably necessary. And we all have to learn to deal with that. I am probably talking especially about the SJW type. But it exists on, on the right. It definitely exists on the right. I tend to notice more of it in the left because we tend to notice it more when it's directed at us. And obviously a lot of that stuff directed at me is because I do hold some right-wing positions. I don't necessarily describe myself as right-wing, left-wing. I don't really think in those kinds of terms. Um, I think both wings are useful to uh, be able to fly. But we have excesses and extremes on both sides. And again, um, I think intentionally, there's been a lot of deliberate polarization. You know, there's been a lot of money spent trying to polarize us. You know, the people that control the media have been obviously trying to polarize us. You go back to kind of the start of the Black Lives Matter movement. The media was constantly fueling that narrative. And if you actually look at the facts and statistics, I'm not saying that, you know, there's no racism and discrimination and hate crimes. Obviously there are. But it is a very, very small part of society now. You know, I wish it wasn't in society at all, obviously. I mean, that would be great. Wouldn't it be great if everyone was an angel? Yeah, it would be heaven, but you know the reason it's not heaven is because not everyone is an angel. There are demons among us. You know, you don't need to take that literally if that's not part of your um, worldview, but at least figuratively. You know, we live in a world uh, where there are forces of light and forces of darkness competing, and um, we all kind of have that angelic and demonic nature, and we've got to kind of learn to balance that. Obviously, in order for any experience of existence whatsoever, contrast is absolutely necessary. Right now, even as I'm speaking, you hear my voice because you have contrast against the silence. And as I pause between words, you notice you become more intensely aware of the silence because now it's empty where there was, you know, voice, <laughs> speech a little bit ago. So the two allow you to perceive uh, the other. Each allows you to perceive the other by contrast. Without that contrast, the world would be like a snowstorm or a, a cave with the lights off. All you see is white or all you see is black. All of existence presents itself to us as a contrast between light and dark, warm and hot, hard and soft, rough and smooth, etc. If it gets out of balance, either way is blinding. You know, you're in a, 
all black room that's pitch dark or you're in an all white room maybe with padded cells that's all white and very brightly blindingly lit you need shadow so the shadow has to exist in order for anything that we could call existence to exist but suffering arises when the balance of light and shadow gets out of kilter. There's a tendency for darkness to dominate. Darkness hates the light. Light destroys darkness. Somehow it doesn't seem right to say that light hates darkness, though. You could almost say that light loves darkness. You know, it desires to fill it. Not to be too Freudian here, but you could almost say light lusts after darkness. It's pulled into it. Temptation. The dark is tempting. And this is one reason that the darkness is associated with hate and the light is associated with love. I once had a discussion with someone who was convinced that um, it's part of white supremacy or white racism that we refer to the white as good and the black as bad. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. Although at maybe a deep psychological subconscious level, it does seem possible to me that um, that could subtly bias people, you know, by skin, by different skin tones, you know, because black does tend to be associated with the dark and therefore with hate. And evil and the white becomes associated with the light love goodness and all that but I I definitely don't think about this polarity in racial terms and I, I don't think that that is how it came about at all I think it's very easy to understand at the symbolic level and it has nothing to do with you know judgments on different groups of people and by saying that, I don't mean to imply that there aren't differences between different groups of people. I think obviously there are, and those differences matter. But a lot of the darkness that's being spread in society does seem to have roots in that racial tension that's been a part of life in the U.S. and other European nations for, you know, the last few decades, kind of increasing, along with you know, immigration and diversity and affirmative action. I think even if you're a leftist, you should be able to see how that could breed resent uh, resentment. But that's not really the rabbit hole I want to go down now. I want to focus more on positive energy versus negative energy. Because I don't want to contribute to the negative. Like I said, there's enough negative all around us already. And because there's all these conflicts in society, you know, we constantly have the feeling of being at war with the world or at war with each other. And a lot of different people are experiencing a lot of suffering. There's a need to restore balance. And I think that one of the things that we have to consider when trying to figure out how to restore, you know, balance and social harmony is thinking about separating groups that do not get along. You know, we've all been, you know, brainwashed with all this, you know, diversity is great stuff, and it is in some ways, you know, a certain amount of it. But I don't think anyone reads the story of the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament and thinks, oh wow, that's great. God really blessed those people. They all speak different languages now. How wonderful. No, I mean, it led to the destruction of the society. You know, it led to the uh, collapse of the Tower of Babel. Because they were no longer one people with one language. They weren't able to communicate. There was nothing but chaos. And the tower crumbled. And yet we're supposed to believe that, you know, diversity in multiculturalism is a great idea and it's definitely going to work. I think we need to rethink that.
And in light of that, I think that discussions about borders and national sovereignty and immigration and national identity, racial identity, those are all things that are valid to discuss. And for white people especially, that's become a little bit taboo, to say the least. And obviously, you know, for anyone that's non-white, you know, listening, I'm not saying, you know, white people are oppressed. I don't, I don't really buy into victim mentalities of any kind. I'm just saying that um, usually any expression of white identity is met with extreme hostility, as if white people are not allowed to exist as a people. Like they're not allowed to have an identity as a people. When for every other group, that's perfectly fine. You know, it's great for Asians to have Asian heritage and culture festivals and different things like that. Um, it's fine to celebrate, you know, African culture and heritage and all that. And it should be. But it should also be fine to celebrate um, white European heritage and culture. You know, white people do have their own identity uh, as a race, as a racial group. They're different from other people, just like, you know, Asians are different from Africans and so on. Anytime you start talking about differences, that's always taken as an invitation to comparison. And I think it's fine to compare and recognize that different groups as a trend, do tend to excel at different things. This is just like, as individuals, we each have our own unique gifts and talents and abilities and um, our excellences, our arete, or whatever. And, you know, my lead guitarist is a much better guitarist than I am. You know, I play guitar a little bit, but I don't, I don't feel bad about myself because uh, he is objectively a better guitarist than I am. And he doesn't, you know, feel bad that, you know, I'm a better singer than he is. You know, people have different strengths, different weaknesses. And yes, different groups of people have different uh, sets of strengths and weaknesses. Obviously, that only applies as an average, but those group averages matter. Obviously, at an individual level, um, we may be outliers. We may conform more or less to kind of those statistical um, truths about our group. So we're all individuals, but we're also all parts of various collectives. Race is one grouping that matters. Obviously, religion is another one that matters as history clearly demonstrates, you get, you know, different religious groups in an area and tensions tend to arise out of their interactions because a religion is so central to someone's life. Uh, or at least it should have some impact on how you live your life. And of course that affects your relationships with others. And so I don't think that we can be shy about talking about religious differences and religious issues either. For a while I was really into the kind of new atheist movement and you know some people are into uh, you know different identitarian movements and stuff like that and that's fine I think that's you know perfectly healthy you know within certain limits as long as you keep it balanced but I think if you come to see everything in those terms it can be limiting and it can push you toward an extreme because you're not allowing the full picture in. So I think um, economic uh, or socioeconomic classes matter. You know, when you have such a large gulf between the rich and the poor, I don't think that's healthy for a society because there's kind of this upper class and this lower class and I don't subscribe to Marxist ideology or anything, but you know, there is something valid to talk about there as far as 
class division and class warfare. It is a real thing. And the more of a gulf you get between the rich and the poor, the more polarized society becomes. And of course, there's going to be conflicts. Now, unlike some people, I think that free market uh, or, or free markets is the solution to that, not more government control. I think government control is basically the problem because the government has a monopoly on the use of force in an area. Now, just by its nature, obviously that's going to become corrupt because they see that they can use their power to get more power. They can use their control over uh, lawmaking to write laws that help themselves and their family members and their friends and various factions or groups that they may be parts of. Without government, you don't have that monopoly. Obviously, everyone is going to be interested in doing what benefits them. But so is everyone else, so it kind of balances out. And of course, different groups are always going to be interested in what maybe gives their group an, ad an advantage over other groups or just what's good for their group. They might be very conscientious about it. They may not want to benefit their group at the expense of another group. And I think that's noble and I think that's a good ideal. But some groups are willing to do more to hurt other groups in order to advance their own agenda. Uh, than others. Some groups are definitely more um, malicious and sort of dark than other groups, and some are more light. Um, but as long as no one of those groups has power over any other, they're very limited in terms of how much they can um, negatively affect other groups. If one group does manage to sort of seize a uh, disproportionate amount of wealth, power, and influence, control over the media, and so on, then I think it should be common sense to recognize that that group is probably going to use that power and influence and wealth, uh, you know, influence in the media, control over the financial systems, and so on, to benefit themselves and their group. And inevitably this leads to a kind of head counting. You know, if there is a system of power or a ring of power or whatever, people uh, tend to look at that and see how many people that are members of groups they identify with um, are, are present in that circle of power. And, you know, then everything becomes that head counting game. And I think we're seeing that now. And obviously it's a direct cause of, you know, multiculturalism and diversity, um, immigration from, you know, very incompatible cultures, people that have very different understandings of how a society operates, what is moral and what isn't. Um, you know, obviously speaking a different language, having different culture, different values and so on. And I think it's going to be necessary to remedy that and uh, focus on borders in a broader way. Um, thinking more in terms of group identities. That's often seen as kind of a negative thing, but I don't think it is as long as you, you know, don't carry it to excess and start thinking about how your group can dominate another group or get revenge against another group, or live at the expense of another group. Um, but it's valid to recognize group interest, just like it's valid to recognize individual interest. It's fine that I think of myself as an individual. It's only a problem if I start putting myself as an individual too far ahead of um, other individuals. Again, it's natural, I think, to seek your own best interest, but it's, it's something you have to be aware of, that you need it in order to exist uh, and to survive. That's a survival instinct when it comes down to it. But that's a part of the animal nature that we have to learn to control. 
I realize that I'm just kind of rambling at this point, and that's all right. I, I really didn't even have anything specific in mind that I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to at least say hi, just discuss a couple of things that are on my mind, um, and hopefully I've put out a little bit more of a calm, peaceful energy, and hopefully that maybe makes your day a little bit more positive, a little bit less dark. Um, so basically I just wanted to encourage everyone to, uh, you know, use negative energy as a tool, but, you know, try to harness it, direct it into something useful, and try to focus on putting more positive energy out into the world. Again, sorry to sound, you know, new agey or whatever, but um, I, I think that's a, a good point to make that I think needs to be made right now. So, peace.